Okay, well remember last time we were talking about uh, critical refractions that would be observed on a dipping refractor. And we indicated that if you went out in the field and you were doing a typical refraction survey and you just uh, picked a location for your source and then you strung your geophones out in, uh, in you know, some, some direction arbitrarily, that you would see your critically refracted event, you would measure a velocity, but that velocity, the reciprocal of the slope of the uh, critical refraction arrivals, would be an apparent velocity. Now, we're using the subscripts here to, to indicate the location of the source. In this case, the U refers to the source, which is up dip. The D, source is in the down dip location. And we should kind of step back for a minute and say up dip, down dip, we probably don't know. This could be forward, uh, reverse direction, or this could be location A, this could be location B, this could be location 1, this could be location 2. Uh, <clears throat> so at this point, we really don't know until we do our analysis, until we collect our data. Once we collect our data, it becomes fairly obvious what the up dip and the down dip uh, directions are. Uh, here we've got... Um, the response with the source up dip and you can see that the slope of the critical refraction arrivals are greater is greater than the slope of the critical refraction event that comes in with the source in the down dip location so the the uh, slopes are proportional to the or are equal to the reciprocal of the velocities so we have an apparent velocity then which is greater when the source is down dip than we do when the source is up dip, and then these are the velocity terms that we came up with. So when the source is up dip, we get uh, the apparent velocity is equal to V1 over sine of theta critical plus delta. And we get a, an apparent velocity when the source is in the down dip direction of V1 over sine of theta critical minus delta. And note that sine of theta critical plus delta is going to be greater than sine of theta critical minus delta, so the apparent velocity with the source in the down dip direction is going to be greater than the apparent velocity with the source in the up dip location. So also remember that uh, the V1s that you see here in this relationship here, that's information that we can get from the direct arrival. And uh, we could use this, uh, we'll see a direct arrival with the source in this location, we'll see a direct arrival with the source in this location. Um, we can determine these velocities and, and determine how isotropic the, uh, the upper medium is. Uh, uh, likely we're going to be making some measurement errors, so we might want to take an average of those two velocities for our, for our V1. Uh, but we do get these apparent velocities with the source down dip and up dip, and then also our V1. Uh, from the basic data that we collect. Now also remember we we didn't actually solve for the critical distance but we did note schematically that the if we're if our source is in the up dip location uh, that the critical distance uh, we're going to get our first critically refracted ray coming to the to the uh, surface being recorded at a distance from the source when the source is up dip which is less than the distance from the source when the source is down dip takes a longer distance. We, get, we have to go out a longer, uh, greater distance from the source to get to the point of first critical refraction. And we've shown that here in this uh, uh, diagram here, which shows both the forward and the reverse uh, refraction profiling data uh, plotted together. So the critical distance here, greater when the source is down dip than it is when the source is up dip. Another thing that we've noted is that the intercept times uh, when the source is down dip are going to be greater. We've got a, a layer with a greater thickness. Uh, and just based on the slope here, we see this intercept here is when the source is down dip is going to be greater than the intercept time when the source is up dip. We're probably not going to be able to see these critical points because they're going to be obscured partly by these direct arrivals. Remember that these events that we see are not lines, that we've got a seismic wavelet which is uh, uh, following each one of these 
first arrivals. So very often we aren't going to see the actual critical distance on uh, either one of these. But uh, this is just a uh, uh, point to keep in mind that the critical distance uh, shooting from the down dip direction is going to be greater than that from the up dip direction. We'll come back to this particular problem when we start talking about the dipping layer reflection. And we'll actually solve for this critical distance, which is something that we haven't done at this point. You're probably wondering. You may be wondering what that is. So we have this uh, basic data that we're looking at here. We noted that the apparent uh, velocity when the source is in the down dip direction is going to be greater. The slope is less. The apparent velocity is uh, less when the source is in the up dip direction. Our intercept times are uh, less up dip than they are down dip. And we have these basic relationships here. The uh, reciprocal of the apparent velocity when the source is in the up dip direction. And I know this is redundant, but just keep in mind that the subscripts here refer to the location of the source and not the direction that we're shooting. So the source is up dip. In this case, this subscript indicates that the source is located in the down dip direction. So we have these apparent velocities, uh, one over the apparent velocity obtained from uh, the up dip source would be sine theta critical plus delta likewise over v1 likewise one over the apparent velocity when the sources in the down dip location would be sine of theta critical minus delta over v1 and we'll simplify the notation from here on we'll just refer to vu and vd u source up dip d source down dip and when we Take a look at these relationships here and solve for the sine of theta critical plus delta, sine of theta critical minus delta. We get uh, sine of theta critical plus delta equal to V1 over VU, sine of theta critical minus delta equal to V1 over VD. And then we can solve for, just by taking the inverse sign, the uh, uh, theta critical plus delta would be equal to the inverse sine of V1 over VU, and theta critical minus delta would be equal to the inverse sine of V1 over VD. So working with these two relationships here, you can see that we could add these two relationships together, get 2 theta sub C. We could subtract these two relationships and get 2 delta. Critical angle, the dip. So if we add the two equations, we find that the critical angle is equal to 1 half inverse sine V1 over VU plus the inverse sine of V1 over VD. And if we subtract the two, we find that the dip is equal to 1 half the inverse sine V1 over VU minus the inverse sine of V1 over VD. So we have these two uh, expressions. We can solve for either theta critical or the dip of the layer. So these are no longer unknowns. We can take the observations that we've made the V1 uh, the, from the direct arrival, the apparent uh, velocities when the source is up dip and down dip and so on. And then we can figure out what the critical angle is and what the dip of the layer is. And when we know what the critical angle is, we can just go back to Snell's law. We know that sine theta critical is equal to V1 over V2. So the V2 is going to be equal to V1 over sine of theta critical, which we have calculated v2, again, is easily derived, as noted here. As a, as a footnote, uh, we're going to consider small angle approximations here. You can try this out on your own. Uh, remember that when sine of theta is, when theta is small, that sine of theta is approximately equal to theta. And if we make that assumption in this relationship here, we are assuming that sine of theta is equal to theta, is equal to v1 over v2, is equal to uh, sine of uh, <clears throat> 1 half inverse sine v1 over vu, uh, inverse sine v1 over vd. And then just letting these in inverse, uh, letting the sine of these uh, angles equal to uh, the arguments here, we have 1 half v1 over vu plus one half V1 over VD. 
This would just be the ratio V1 over V2. And again, all we've done is just substituted uh, what we have up here for theta critical in this expression. And then we're just letting these uh, uh, inverse signs of these arguments uh, equal the uh, arguments themselves. So uh, this is a real, this is, and I just point out down here that actually calculating theta critical is, uh, sign of theta critical is pretty trivial. The, uh, you know, the theta critical is the inverse of this, would not require a whole lot of effort uh, with your calculator or in Excel or MATLAB. Uh, but just taking a look at this approximation, we can see that this can be reduced to uh, an expression for V2, which is equal to 2 times the product of the apparent velocities over the sum of the apparent velocities. And uh, <clears throat> this could be a useful pro approximation here, and I just use a couple examples. Let's uh, take theta uh, equal to 20 degrees, and it's, it's best to do this in radians. Uh, this corresponds to 0.349 radians. And the uh, sine of 20 is equal to 0.342. So we can see that the sine of theta approximately equal to theta. 0.342, not too much different than 0.349. We can increase the angle to 30 degrees. And uh, theta corresponds to 0.52 radians. Sine of theta to 0.5. So again, we're pretty close here. The sine of 30 degrees is, is uh, very close to... Uh, the uh, 30 degrees expressed in radians. So we often have, have large velocity contrasts so that um, these critical angles are, are, you know, 30 degrees or so, make it uh, a reasonable approximation to at least consider or to be aware of. And again, it's, it's pretty, pretty trivial matter to go through this computation and, and uh, come up with uh, theta critical in, in a more straightforward fashion. But here are a couple problems that I'll leave you with, and um, I'll just I'll kind of briefly summarize this problem. Uh, you've got reversed uh, refraction profiling data. You can you can read through this as I'm talking, or just uh, pause the uh, video. But we have a source at A, we have a source at B, and we have arrival times from A and B that are observed at the midpoint. And the arrival time from, of the critical refraction generated from when the source is at point A comes in a little bit earlier than the arrival time from the um, generated by the source when it's in position B. So we have uh, that difference, which is uh, noted. And uh, so given that information, you're asked to show that the apparent velocity uh, determined from the slope of the travel time curve for refracted waves produced from source A is less than the apparent velocity for the refracted waves produced from the source at B. And you know, further, you would uh, want to determine which way the layers dip uh, which end of the profile is down dip, which end of the profile is up dip, and offer some explanation. So try to be specific there. And a second problem is um, we've collected some data, we've measured the direct arrival, we have a velocity of 1500 meters per second. We've got apparent velocities here, we've got a V2 of uh, 2500 meters per second. We know this isn't the actual V2, this is an apparent a velocity here. We've got another V2. Again, read this as an apparent V2 of 3,250 meters per second. And the question is to find the dip of the refractor. So that's one problem. And then, after you've done that, how would these velocities, these apparent velocities, change if you increased the dip of the refractor by 10 degrees? So these problems come from uh, Robinson and Carew, an excellent text. Some of you may have it, um, but um, these problems will help consolidate some of the uh, ideas and the concepts, the conce concepts that we've been talking about. So take a look at this uh, for next time. Uh, thanks for joining us, and see you then.